How bad will the coronavirus outbreak get? What happens when a new virus hits us and there isn't a vaccination yet? It's what we all like to know, and these curves may offer the answer. This is what a rapidly spreading global pandemic looks like. A lot of people get sick quickly, with the peak showing a massive number infected at the same time. A slower spreading global pandemic looks like this. The rate of new cases is slower, and they're spread out over a longer period of time. In both cases, the number of people infected is the same. The reason we need to aim for the orange curve is in the dotted line. This represents the capacity of our healthcare system, the number of beds, doctors, ventilators, and everything else. If this capacity is overwhelmed, it could be that your grandma, your best friend's dad, or any other vulnerable person doesn't get medical treatment and might die. We have to flatten that curve, and experts advise us to do this by social distancing. This means we need to minimize contact with people. Even if it feels cruel to stay away from your friends and loved ones, or to separate your kids from their grandparents, skip social gatherings. Even if you've been looking forward to that football match or concert for months, or you have the feeling that the next party could be a once-in-a-lifetime chance to find your future partner. Avoid public transportation and cancel travel plans, even if this means giving up on a long-planned holiday or an important business trip. Set up your home office, if possible, even if it seems hard to mix your family and work life and to lose that regular change of scene. Simply stay at home. Because in the end, this is what will save lives. These simulations show how, if everyone acted like there was no disease, the virus could spread at an unlimited speed. But if three quarters of our population practice social distancing, the virus would need much more time to jump from one person to another. And if we practice social distancing of an extensive kind, and only one in every eight people is moving around, this does flatten the curve. The good news is, every single one of us can make a difference. The not so good news is, social distancing is a challenge for our mental health. So, First of all, if you feel stressed, depressed, or anxious, don't judge yourself. These are all valid emotions at a time like this. And from an evolutionary point of view, anxiety is good. It helps us to prepare ourselves and be alert. Don't overload yourself with information. Get the facts, not the rumors. Find your reliable news source and only check it once or twice a day. This will give you a sense of certainty. Stay connected and maintain your social networks. Because social distancing doesn't mean emotional distancing. Call your loved ones, FaceTime your grandparents, have an online coffee break with your best friend, or go online for dinner. Face-to-face -face communication is important for us. Even as babies, we read our parents' facial expressions. Seeing one other creates a feeling of community and gives every call more emotional weight. Stick to your daily routine or create a new one. Get up at the same time you used to and get out of your pajamas. Take breaks regularly and set yourself some milestones during your day. Routines provide a sense of familiarity and structure. And structure provides direction in your life, which is really helpful when everything around you is changing. Be good to yourself. Pay attention to your own needs. Eat healthy food, give your body a workout, get fresh air and keep up a regular sleeping routine. This will keep your immune system strong. Don't use smoking, alcohol or other drugs to deal with your emotions. Because in the long term, they won't help you. Instead, try to express your feelings. Maybe to someone who is well schooled in this. Be supportive of others. Assist vulnerable people, shop local, be nice to those who are working in public health, supermarkets, or schools. You can help yourself by helping others. And if you still have time to spare, declutter, do a puzzle, tackle your bookkeeping, start a new hobby, do whatever you want, but always embrace distractions.
Because the most honest reply to when will this be over is simply it depends. It's not going to be over anytime soon. A matter of months rather than weeks. But remember, you're not alone. With social distancing, you're doing a great service to our society. You're saving lives. So let's get through this and flatten the curve together. Live your life, just make some changes.